as a content creator, a photographer, a videographer, and a person who just loves all things cameras, I have accumulated quite a bit of equipment over the years. However, I have to say, one of the things that I use the most is one of my first real pieces of equipment, and that is my Canon 24 millimeter F 2.8 that I am filming on right now. And in this video, I wanted to tell you why I think that this piece of glass is the most underrated lens out there. Everything in this video, B-roll that is not of the lens and photos are all going to be things that I shot using the Canon 24 millimeter f 2.8. So if you're somebody who is a content creator, a photographer, a videographer, or just wanting to add something to your collection that is not only inexpensive, but one of the most versatile pieces of equipment that I own, go ahead and keep on watching. And if you're not one of those people, I hope you enjoy hanging out with me for just a little bit, hearing me talk about one of my favorite camera pieces of all time. Hi y'all, it's Annalise, and like I said, I think this lens, the Canon 24mm f2.8, is the most underrated Canon lens of all time. And I say that because I never hear anybody talking about this lens, and I've never heard of any photographer friend of mine having this lens. Now maybe the only reason why I heard about it is because I went to the Best Buy website, went to lenses sorted by Canon and sorted by lowest price to highest price, and this one came up. And I honestly, I'm assuming that's how I found it, because I don't know how else I would have found it, because nobody talks about it. But this lens I've had for maybe Maybe like five years now and I can say that I think this lens is probably the most used lens out of my collection now I don't have many lenses I have my 10 to 18 I have my kit lens which is the 18 to 55 and then I have the nifty 50 f 1.8 and I use all of these for their own reasons but the 24 millimeter is the one that's almost always on my camera and that's because I film a majority of my YouTube videos with it now if this is the first time that you're seeing this angle because this is the first video of mine consider subscribing to the channel I make videos about tech and lifestyle and a few things in between and I feel like camera gear falls into the tech category I don't know if it's just me who thinks about that but I feel like the the camera gear tube and the tech tube are all like in the same family and I feel like this fits in pretty well so if you like that kind of content consider subscribing but anyway I know I already talked a little bit about YouTube stuff but I use this lens not only just for video but I also use it for photography so I want to talk about like the video side of things first then we'll talk about photo and then I'll talk about some maybe like questions that you might come up with as you're watching this video that I think are would be good to answer. Okay, let's just get into it. <laughs> so right off the bat, if I would have to say anything about this lens, I would say it is versatile because I think it does a lot of things pretty great. It's like the jack of all trades, but master of none, but jack of most is better than one. What is the full quote? Though oftentimes better than a master of none. And I feel like that perfectly captures this lens because I think it's really good at getting a lot of information in your frame. I think you can also get nice macro shots with this lens, both on the photography and the videography side of things. And if I needed to, I could create everything that I've ever made on my YouTube channel just using this lens. Now, obviously I don't because I do have other lenses in my arsenal that might do certain things better, but this can do all of it pretty dang well. Now I already talked about me filming my own videos, just a kind of a talking head video like this, whether I'm doing a review about something, talking about my experience, just kind of talking to y'all about stuff in my life. I often use this lens and it rarely comes off my camera, especially when I'm in like my studio setup. My camera's attached to my tripod and the 24 millimeter is attached to my camera. I rarely swap it out just because that's what I've kind of designed my whole studio setup off of. Now being at a focal length of 24 millimeters, it is kind of on the wide side. It's not super wide as my 10 to 8 18, this is a wide angle landscape lens, but this is kind of a more palatable wide angle in my opinion. The reason why I say that, I'm gonna move around here a little bit. If I get really close to you, there is not a ton of distortion on my face. It doesn't look entirely like I'm in a fishbowl. I feel like even when I'm super, super close like this, there's still not a lot of distortion. If I were to do that with my 10 to 18, it would look like I put on the fish eye effect in Final Cut Pro. I feel like this look is the most like common to what you'd see if you were looking at me in person. It is the most like close to the human an eye. I don't think that's actually true. I think there are lenses that are probably like technically closest to the view of the human eye, but like to me, this looks normal and natural. This doesn't look distorted. See, I can get super close to you like this. You can see the details of my eyelashes and all my pores and you never should be this close to me. I'm sorry that I'm this close to you, but like you can still see all this information even though I'm super close and I don't look, aside from my own face, I don't look weird. I look, I, I, I look like a person. Now, speaking of a sort of distortion, I wanna talk about the photography side of using this lens. Now, I have used this lens 
for so many different types of photos. I've used it for family photos. I've used it for portraits and for headshots. Another reason why I love it so much and it will always hold a soft space in my heart is that it was the first lens I ever bought outside of like having my kit lens with my camera. And it was also the first thing I ever bought with my YouTube money. So that will always just like hold a dear place in my heart of being like such a big milestone for me. But anyway, on the photography side of things, I used this lens for everything when I first got it because it was my only like fancy lens that I had. The thing about a prime lens, which is what this lens is, and that means like, for example, I'll use my 50 here. A prime lens means that it doesn't zoom or anything like that. There is a ring on here, but it's for focus. If you want to get closer to your subject, you have to move your camera physically closer to your subject. Or if you want to get farther away, you have to move physically far away. Now I do want to kind of say this, which I should have mentioned earlier. Although I love camera gear and I spend honestly a lot of my time on YouTube watching camera related videos, I cannot retain the proper technical terms in my brain. I need to pour some like Elmer's glue in there. So hopefully some things will stick. All I know is that the look of a 50 is much different than a look of a 24. And I think there's a couple of reasons behind that. One, it's the focal length. Two, it's the aperture. But there's just something else that happens when you're taking portraits on a 50 versus a 24. Now I'll show some examples on screen of a portrait taken of 24 millimeters and a portrait taken at 50 millimeters. Luckily, they're the same person. How convenient I have two portraits that I've taken of the same person using different lenses. <laughs> I have the most experience with portraits and headshots because that's how I get most of my photography work is doing those things. I've branched out a little bit into the theatrical photography and the family portraits, but mainly portraits and headshots. Now you can tell with the 24 millimeter portrait, it looks different. It's kind of like that distortion of now you can tell the difference that that has a fisheye stretched out wide angle effect and the 50 doesn't. Now, contrary to what people might say, I don't think the 24 is bad. Because of the equipment I now own, if I'm going on a headshot shoot or a portrait shoot, and I know I'm taking mainly like headshots type of photos, I'm going to always bring my 50 with me. With that being said, I think really beautiful pictures come from the 24. And in my personal opinion, I think why the 24 doesn't work for headshots is more of a style choice and less of a quality of lens issue. I think the photo quality is still great. The style is not something I would go with now. I have a lot more experience. I'm a better photographer than I would was then and maybe if I use that lens now on a portrait now it would look different I don't know just, that's just some information for you to kind of take in and, and see what it means to you <laughs> now coming back to aperture a reason why having a lower aperture slash wider aperture the number is the f-stop the f 2.8 the aperture is the hole that opens on the lens that lets in more light and that's why having a lower aperture number I'll just call it that is great is because it lets in more light so it takes better photos in low light that's why this lens is also a lens that I reach for when I do my theatrical photography. Now, because of how wide of an angle it is and it doesn't zoom, it's not great for theatrical photography because, because typically you are not close to the actors or close to the stage. But when you're doing like a black box show, you're doing a very small type of theater show, or you're taking pictures during a dress rehearsal where you can actually get on stage and close to the actors, depending on the director, I think this lens also works really great. And the f2.8 helps me get in as much light as possible in a very dark theater. And kind of like I touched on before, with having that wider slash lower aperture, you get the nice bokeh effect, the smooth and buttery background with things out of focus, which is great for doing portraits because then you get focus on what you want to see and everything else is more of just like ambiance. You're like, oh, there's something in the background. It's not just plain. It gives me a little texture. It's a little bit dynamic, but it's not taking away from what you really want to focus on. And that's another reason why I love it in my videos, because I like putting things in my background. You might see that there's a little something there or a little something over there. Oh, she has a pop figure in her background because you can tell she's a little bit quirky and oh, there's some books over there because she's well read and educated. But I want you focusing right here on the money maker. but you can at least tell the stuff is back there. And that's why this aperture is such a great point for not only video, but also photo. I think I've taken probably any type of photo that I can think of on this lens, and I think it makes it look beautiful. I have the Canon 80D. This is like a mid-range DSLR, so it's not full frame. There is a crop. I don't know how the percentages on that work, so keep that in mind when you are purchasing this lens. Regardless of the, the crop factor and all that stuff, I think this is a really great piece of glass. And for only $150, it has a really low barrier of entry, so it's something that is realistic 
realistic and easy to save up for because yeah, $150 is a lot, but maybe you say my end of the year goal is to purchase a lens and you put away $10 every month, you're almost there. And I think that's really great. And then you'd be getting a really great piece of glass out of it that will last you so long, as long as you take care of it. I've never dropped this thing. I've never banged it against anything. I take care of my stuff because I spend money on it. I want, to, I want to take care of it and have it last as long as possible. But coming from a person who has gotten my money's worth out of this lens, because I use it all of the time. If you're considering adding to your collection and you don't have any lenses, I would absolutely recommend this lens. With that, let me transition into like my little Q and A section. So if you're a content creator like myself, you make YouTube videos, would I recommend this lens for you? Absolutely. What I really like about it is I'm probably about, I have a measuring tape. I can actually see how far I am away from my camera. 30. Okay, so I'm a little bit less than three feet away from my camera. The reason why I like this is because like I said, I like framing myself like I am now and I can still reach my camera, like here's my hand. I can still reach my camera to fiddle with settings. I can see my flip out screen to tell that I am indeed in focus. And if I wanted to stop recording, all I just gotta do is lean forward a teensy bit and now I'm touching the record button on my camera. So it is really easy to film yourself with this lens. Another reason why this lens is great is because if you're somebody who wants to film with multiple people, I think probably like half of the videos I've filmed with my mom on my channel, which is a lot more filmed actually than are actually on my channel. A lot are still sitting in the editing program on my computer. You'll see them soon. But I think I filmed like half of them using this lens because I think it looks really pretty and it can still fit my mom and I in it. Once again, I think it looks good. And then lastly, I think this camera does really good up close shots. You can get your product B-roll if you wanted to. When I do my reviews, I like getting B-roll because I think it upscales like the quality of my videos. I like that look for my videos and for my channel. I think it just looks nice. And this lens could absolutely do that. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't have any lens, not even a kit lens, would I recommend this lens? I would say yes. The reason why it's like a, mm, uh, yeah, I want to say yes is because I love this lens so much. So I'm very biased against it. But the reason why I would probably say no is the perk of a kit lens, like my 18 to 55. And I've had this for stupid long. I got it with my very, very first DSLR. This goes from 18 to 55. So you can have a wider angle, which it doesn't look bad. And you can also zoom in to a 50, which is a lot, lot closer. So I would say if you're like on a budget and you don't even have a single lens, you might want to go with a kit lens as your very first lens. But if you did go with a 24, I don't think you would be screwing yourself over or putting yourself in a box. If you don't have any lenses, not even a kit lens, and you purchased a 50, I think you would be limiting yourself a lot just because of how zoomed in this lens is by itself. And then you can't zoom out and it, it would be hard to film yourself if you're filming yourself. It just kind of pigeonholes you a little bit. But the 24, once again, I think it's a great middle of the road lens. Now, at the end of the day, I could sing my praises forever about this lens. However, you know what you want. And if you are somebody who says, I am only ever going to take headshots and portraits, that's what I want to do with my camera. Or I am only ever going to take landscape shots, or I want to do photography for wildlife, or I want to do architecture shots. This might not be the lens for you, but I think if you're somebody who is more than just saying, I only want to do one type of content creation, whether it be photos, videos, YouTube, documentaries, interviews, whatever, I think this is a worthwhile addition to your collection. Now, of course, somebody decided to just start blowing their leaves as I'm finishing up this video. But before I go, I will leave you with this last final remark. Something I like about watching videos about people talking about their favorite lenses, regardless of what system they're on, I get a better understanding of the focal length and the aperture and what that look creates. So hopefully, even though you use a Nikon or a Sony or anything out there, or maybe you decide that the Canon 24 millimeter F 2.8 is not for you, hopefully this video is educational in providing you some sort of insight into your future camera collection, camera gear journey. With that being said, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please like the video. If you are new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. I make tons of videos about tech, about cameras, because I think that's tech, about my life as a content creator, as an actor, and some general Annalise related nonsense in between. So if you like that kind of stuff or it sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing. Of course, I do have a Patreon, almost forgot about that. And these are my top patrons and there are different tiers on my Patreon. So if you want to see any exclusive perks, ways that you can contribute to this channel or ways that you can get shouts out, shouts out, shout outs on this channel, check the link in the description, patreon.com slash Annalise to help support me and this channel and all the things I make. Well, that's it for me. Stay beautiful. Have a marvelous day and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.